I apologize for not fitting this into the last lecture, so I'll make it really quick. When we talk about problems in agriculture, there's a problem that exists called the tragedy of the commons. This is something that involves other uh, aspects of life as well. However, in agriculture, it's uh, a pretty big deal and it has pretty far reaching consequences. So the tragedy of the commons is when individuals neglect the well-being of society and future generations in pursuit of their own personal gain. So it's basically uh, human nature uh, choosing to be greedy instead of thinking about how it will affect others. So here's how this goes. You don't necessarily need to write this, but just kind of imagine it and it will help you understand this, uh, this term. So in ancient times, uh, common land was set aside, usually in the center of a village, for everybody to graze their livestock. So in this case, we're going to use sheep. <clears throat> if everybody grazes two or three sheep on this land, um, everybody will be able to, uh, we'll say, reap the wool from these sheep and then sell the wool and everybody's going to get some sort of profit um, from, the, from the actual common grazing land. However, all it takes is for one individual to maybe seek to maximize his own profit. So instead of being content with having uh, sheep's wool from three sheep and the money from that, they decide, well, what the heck, I'll just throw two or three more sheep on there. No one will ever notice and I'll make twice the profit. Well, as this happens, uh, then you actually will see other neighbors are going to see, okay, listen, you know, Farmer Bob has five sheep out there. Everybody else only has two or three sheep. Well, I, I want five sheep. I want the profit from that type of wool. And so, therefore, they increase the number of sheep that they put on the land. Ultimately, what happens is you end up with so many sheep on the same common land, the land has not actually increased. And so, therefore, overgrazing actually destroys the field to the point where it's no longer useful for any grazing. And ultimately, no one can have any sheep because there is no grazing land for them. In the long term, choices that seem really good for that one individual actually harms the greater community, which in turn is actually going to result in harm to the individual. Uh, we actually see this example um, in all sorts of things, like overfishing is a really good example. Um, one of the problems with overfishing is fishing faster than fish can reproduce. Well, if you think that nobody's really looking, you might choose to overfish an area, bring in more than you're actually able to yield or legally should be yielding, um, you know, according to conservation estimates and ecologists telling you, hey, listen, like they can't reproduce that fast. However, when you're in it just for profit, if you bring in more fish, that does mean more money for you. If you overfish and other people overfish and everybody ends up overfishing, you ultimately will actually cause the dying out of a species, which means then the next year, next season, you actually won't have any fish, nor will anyone else, nor will future generations to come. Um, and so one of the things that we're actually seeing is that there is a uh, bigger emphasis on like reporting the fishing and the amount of fishing that you do. Uh, unfortunately, um, well, fortunately, this reporting process actually protects the fishing industry from the tragedy of the commons. Um, but other things are not, uh, other areas of the world are not so lucky. So, for example, grazing uh, cattle in an area, um, it may be that people, again, will graze an area or farm a field. And even though uh, environmentalists and experts are telling you, if you keep farming this field, it's going to run out of resources. But yet, you are looking out for your own individual interests, so you keep farming it anyways. And after several years, your farm runs out of resources and you can no longer farm it. Um, this is the tragedy of the commons. Again, short-term greed is actually causing the downfall of an entire community and even generations to come. So a way to kind of um, show you this, again, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime. Overfish and no one is going to eat soon. Um, so this is a really good example of that. Uh, that's the tragedy of the commons. The only other thing that I want to mention is to make sure that you revisit Esther Bosrup's theory um, about uh, lack of food and how we can more intensively farm our food. And I would also maybe take a look at the information about drug crops and figure out, like, why is it that farmers in certain areas of the world are willing to participate in drug cropping. Um, most of these farmers are not going to be drug users. That's not the case at all. The problem is there's no financial incentive for them to farm traditional crops when a drug crop, especially if it's in a run unregulated area, um, you could actually stand to make a lot of money uh, off of that. So countries like Colombia, the government of Colombia has tried to incentivize farmers to get them to grow traditional crops, uh, crops that could actually feed people in the community. Um, instead of farming like the coca plant, which is going to participate uh, in the cocaine trafficking. Um, but again, it's really hard to incentivize that when you can make just tons and tons of profit off of drug crops.
Uh, that, of course, being an example of the informal economy, one that's not taxed, it doesn't help the government, um, perpetuates crime, all of that sort of stuff. So um, that's all I have for you. Again, review, review, review. Uh, make sure that you go back over your old quizzes. There's those quizzes reviews in Schoology as well. And if you're still listening, um, go ahead and do me a favor tomorrow and uh, on your test, so first of all tomorrow, uh, there's going to be a couple different versions of the test, so make sure that you write test version A, B, or C after your name, and then draw me a teeny, 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 tiny example of a livestock animal. I don't care if it's a chicken or a horse or a pig or whatever it is, um, whatever it may be, but draw me a little picture of a farm animal and uh, you'll get some extra credit for listening. All right, thanks guys. Have a good evening.